Hello again everybody, this is Mr. Everything. I'm coming back at you with another Wargaming and Miniature video. In this video, we're going to be uh, painting a, uh, a dwarf. A dwarf for one of my friends. He's commissioned me to paint him his dwarf cleric. Uh, this miniature, I'm not sure where it came from. It's a slot of base figure. He gave me a slot of base. Uh, not a... It's, I don't think this is a privateer miniature. I'm not sure, uh, but it's a cool looking dwarf uh, with his like hammer shaped in the shaped like an axe. Yeah, we're gonna go ahead and uh, paint this guy up, but I need to prime him up, and then we'll be right. Back. All right, guys, welcome back. We are continuing on with my friend's dwarf cleric. Uh, I spray primed him, but as you can see, you don't get a 100% coating when you spray prime. So I mixed some black acrylic and water to fill in all the little gaps and sp spray points that were missed. Uh, basically just so that I would get a 100% black primer on the entire model uh, without any gaps. All right, well, he's almost entirely painted already. Good deal. All right, I'm going to put that down, let it dry, and then we'll be back. All right, we're going to go ahead and continue on with my friend's dwarf model right here. What we're going to do is we're going to paint the metal parts, because he has a giant breastplate, and he's wearing scale armor as well, it looks like. And I'm going to paint these... Uh, His shins look like they're metal. His gauntlets, nope, they, they're not gauntlets, they're just gloves. But he's got this like bracer over his forearm, so let's go ahead and that okay I'm sure both of them have it and if this guy's got scale he probably has scale as well yep he does okay so scale up to the bracers basically and the bracers up to the wrist where then it's glove that takes over there uh, I'm going to paint the hammer, which is actually shaped like an axe. It's very weird. It's like a flat, like a war hammer of some kind. You know, war hammers have the, uh, have like spikes on them and stuff. That's kind of what this is. Like a lucerne hammer, if you're familiar with that. Okay. And of course, he's got this helmet on which covers the majority of his head. I don't know what I'm doing. And you're saying, Mr. Everything, why didn't you paint his flesh first? Yeah, because I'm doing the I'm doing a reverse paint technique on this gentleman right here. Which is paint the flesh after you paint the helmet or the armor around his head. Okay, that's how we're getting started on the dwarf. Alright guys, and once that dries, we'll continue on. All right, we're working on the dwarf model. The metal's dried. I've mixed up a little bit of light flesh. I'm using a fine tip brush, a 12.0, and I'm going to put that inside the helmet. But I'm going to use a little bit, I'm going to leave a little bit of black around the outer edge uh, to kind of become shadow. Shadow? Yeah, shadow. Perfecto. And then the mouth. The nose. Okay. 
be a little bit more into there. Just Yeah, that face is starting to look good. All right, I'm going to let that dry, and then we'll be right back. All right, guys, we're going to continue working on the dwarf model here. What I wanted to do now is just drop a little bit of flesh wash inside the face to highlight some of the different um, features, like his nose and his eyes, things like that. So we dropped a little bit of flesh wash in there. All right, once that dries, we'll be right back. All right, now on this dwarf, what we're going to do is we're going to paint his boots and his gloves the uh, P3 bootstrap leather. Um, so, yeah, so here we go with the hands. And this one hand where he's pointing, one hand where he's holding on to his hammer and then reaching down to where the boots are at Got some stubby feet. Yeah, I don't know who made this model, but it definitely looks a lot different than a lot of other models I've seen. It's a cool model for sure, but uh, I've never seen it before. Okay, so he's got his boots and his gloves, or bootstrap leather. All right, we're going to put that down and let that dry, and we'll be back with the next color. All right, it's a new day, and we're going to continue on with the dwarf today. Uh, now, I talked to the owner of this model, and he told me it's a Ganesha model. Uh, it's from the game Song of Blades and Heroes. Uh, okay, now, and he also uh, made a dwarf cleric with the god of Gond, right, which is the uh, god of smiths and craft. And so the Gond clerics wear saffron robes, right? That's their, that's their holy color. Their vestments are saffron. So what I'm going to do is I'm using this golden ochre to represent saffron. Now we have it ready to go. So here we go. Now this is a golden ochre and as you know yellow colors are weak they're, they have low pigment. And so what happens is uh, painting over a black, a lot of times what I'll do is I'll like dry brush a white color first. And then that white will hit the highlights. And so that when I go over it with a yellow or any other real weak color, sometimes reds, but usually yellows, uh, any yellow that goes into the low areas would still be hitting the black and still kind of have a black tint to it, but the raised areas would be white. Okay, but I decided against that. I decided to give it a, a two coat. So this is actually going to get two coats. Uh, and I'm kind of deliberately manually painting the high areas. Uh, I am painting the low areas too, but I'm painting with a little bit thicker coat on the raised areas. Okay, that looks good. Now let me get the front side of it. Trying, uh, not caring, I should say, if I hit the beard. Okay. 
I mean, I do care if I hit the armor. I'm trying to avoid the armor. But I'm not trying to avoid uh, the beard. And I'm going to also paint the back side, or I should say the inside of his cape. I don't know if this is a cloak or a cape. I don't see a hood. It's not a robe because it doesn't have sleeves. Okay. And the inside can survive with just one coat because it's going to be a darker color. I'm just trying to avoid any brush strokes that you see. A technique that I use to kind of eliminate brush strokes is to dab the paint on by going dot, 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 and not sliding the brush. Okay, so the inside is done. Now what I need to do is allow the outside to dry just a little bit so that I can put the second coat on there. All right, when I'm ready to do that, I'll be right back. All right, now we're waiting, while we're waiting for the top or the bottom coat, the base coat of the uh, cape or cloak or whatever that is. I guess it could be a cloak. I guess that could be a uh, hood hanging down on the back there it's kind of hard to tell but while we're waiting for that to dry what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna paint his um, his wood is going to be this rucksack tan from P3 that's gonna be the wood on his handle Notice how it makes a pretty large contrast against the bootstrap leather for his glove. Yeah, you, you want those contrasts when they're separate pieces or items. You want them to really stand out. Okay. I mean, that's basically it. Uh, now, that's all we're going to do on the wood. I'm still waiting for that to dry to cue the back. All right, now yeah. we're continuing on with the dwarf, but we have not finished the cape. But it is starting to dry. It looks like it's getting pretty close to being dry. But while we're waiting, I'm going to use hammer mill khaki on his belt. But not just his belt. And I'm going to get it on his beard a little bit, but that's okay because we haven't painted the beard yet. But he has these little uh, tassels that hang down in the front. I'm gonna paint it on those as well. Okay, and you can kind of see those black tassels hanging down on his crotch. I'm going to paint it on those. make them kind of look a little 
like a worn leather. Okay, that's that's starting to look really good. I still need to paint his beard and put the second coat on his cape. So be right back. All right, here we're going to go ahead and do the second coat of saffron on his man cape is his clerical vestments his divine robes i don't know what you want to call them <laughs> his Focusing on the raised areas still. Almost a dry brush, but with wet paint. Being sure to get the sides just to make sure I hit everything. I'm going to do the inside too because I don't like the way that turned out. There we go. Oh, that looks a lot better. Yeah, sometimes yellow just needs a second coat. And this is a golden ochre, which is basically yellow. But I don't have any paint that's called saffron, so I tried matching this up as close as I could. And this this is the color I had that would look like it would match up with saffron. Because saffron kind of looks like a dirty yellow. You've seen the herb, you know. All right, that actually looks pretty good. So I'm going to set him down, let that dry a little bit, then we'll come back with his beard. All right, guys, we are going to now do the beard. Uh, now I broke out my Citadel small dry brush, and what we're going to do is we're going to dry brush uh, Gun Core Brown onto this guy's beard because I didn't want it to be a red brown like all my other dwarves. I didn't want it to be black or blonde, right? So we put a little paint, very little paint on the brush. I wipe most of it off, not all of it, most of it. And then I drag my brush across the beard to kind of give it a brown, all the little, I'll, I'll give you a close-up view once once I got this you do just a little bit more wipe most of it off use the paper towel some people say to use cardboard but um, because it absorbs the paint better for dry brushing. I've actually never used cardboard, never even experimented with it, because I've been doing paper towels for 30 years.
Okay, I'm going to zoom in so you can see this because you can't really see it. It's way out of focus. So give me a second here. Okay, now look at the beard. See the hairs. You got the black in the cracks and then the brown on the raised areas, right? Okay. Yeah, he's starting to look pretty good. I'm going to do a little bit of gold work on him, and I think he might be done. Maybe maybe a wash. I'm not sure. Hmm. Let me think about that. All right, let me put him down, and we'll be back to do some finishing touches. All right, now on the dwarf, we're going to touch him up with a little bit of gold. So I got some solid gold from P3 and a 12-0 brush. And unfortunately, I'd already painted it. But basically, all I did was took some dots, dot the belt where those rivets are at. Also, on his arms, uh, he's got a couple of rivets that I've uh, dotted with gold. And then I painted the bottom of the axe handle with a gold stripe. And his belt buckle is gold. And the gold really stands out quite a bit. And that's why I, that's why I painted it gold. Okay. All right, so we're going to let the gold dry. And then we're going to do the base. All right, we're going to go ahead and paint the base a, a brighter green color. This is the uh, splinter blotches. The splinter blotches tend to be a little bit brighter than what we were using splinter stripes on some of the other models. All right. Let's go ahead and paint this base up. Now, I'm not going to do any flocking or texturing of the base. That I would normally do on my wargaming models. I really like Vallejo and how those colors really cover black. Even though Gond is a merchant, or not a merchant, he's a smith, he's the god of smiths, the cleric's a life cleric, so I'm painting his base green. Does that stand out or what? <laughs> Alright, when that dries, we'll do a little close-up and we'll take a look at it. All right, now here we go with the dwarf in a playable state right here. We got, let's see if I can get this focused in or not. Yeah, take a look. Looks pretty good. No clear code or anything. We're just going to play it like that. All right, thanks for coming out and checking out me painting this uh, model for my buddy. And we're going to use it in our D&D game probably tomorrow night. And uh, I'll see you on the next video.